Hi, we're here today to talk about a plant that has a different name now than it did back in history. It's the Osage orange, but back in Lewis and Clark's time, it was known as the Osage apple. We're lucky to have this tree here at the Lewis and Clark Exploratory Center, and we actually have more than one. We have at least four. It is the first plant that Lewis wrote about on the expedition to Jefferson. He actually wrote about it in March of 1804, and he sent Jefferson plantings of the tree. We have some of the original descendants of those trees here in Charlottesville. The Osage orange has a male and a female. Only the females have the fruits, and they also have different types of flowers. Historically, the megafauna, giant ground sloths and mammoths, ate the Osage orange. Today, there's nothing that naturally eats the Osage orange, but if the acorn crop fails, the squirrels will actually eat it but even they don't think it's very tasty. The Osage orange can really grow in any kind of soil. It can grow in clay, it can grow in loam, so there's no particular kind of environment or culture that it needs. It's related to the mulberry tree. In the days of the megafauna, it actually extended throughout North America. Let's go under the tree and I'll tell you a few more details. Now that we're under the tree, we can see this shoot with long spines. In the late 1800s, these spines were used to keep cattle and sheep on the prairie. So it was really part of taming the American West. This was before the invention of barbed wire, which came in the late 1800s. Now the tree was also revered by the Native Americans who would travel hundreds of miles to get its wood. The bow and arrow made from this tree would last potentially 100 years. It's both flexible and hard. When this Osage orange tree is small, it's almost bush-like, not tree-like. And there are many more spines and shoots that come out. This is actually an example of a tree at its full growth. They don't really grow past 50 feet high. Now the Osage orange has a third name that I haven't told you about, monkey brains. And all the children who come here to visit the center call it monkey brains, and then they have a great time throwing them around, using them like bowling balls. Now my reason for loving this tree is different, and it's because it's a reminder of our natural history. When I look at the Osage orange, I remember the mastodons, the giant ground sloths, and the mammoths. I'm Alexandria Searles, and I'm the executive director of the Lewis and Clark Exploratory Center.